What up, players? It's War Boss Tay up in this mud. Welcome to a Fluff Hunters video on the Word Bearers. The Word Bearers are the 17th Legion of the first founding, and they are uh, a traitor legion. Maybe some might argue one of the first traitor legions. Their Primarch, or for those of you who are unfamiliar with Warhammer 40k kind of terminology, their like um, genetic father that all of their DNA and gene seed is kind of filtered through is this guy, Lorgar Aurelian, Primarch of the Word Bearers. And from the very beginning, uh, the interesting thing about the Word Bearers is that at the very beginning of the Crusade, they were known as the Imperial Heralds. They were made up of criminals and uh, very nasty people who the Emperor kind of forgave and told them to... Uh, he kind of conscripted them into his armies and made them space marines and said, uh, go and go and fight fight my enemies and bring them into into the fold. And so they were known... Before they were known as the word bearers, they were known as the Imperial Heralds. Let's see if we can find a little bit more information about how, how they were at the very beginning. I'm looking at the Warhammer 40k wiki. I'm also looking at the Lexicanum. So... Though that's where I'm pulling pulling my information from. Yeah, here we go. Their original recruits were drawn from the sons of defeated enemies, raised to know the crimes of their fathers and the price of the emperor's forgiveness. So it wasn't just the criminals, it was their, their sons that the emperor put into his armies. And so while other space marines and while other legions went to war with righteousness or saying that, you know, our cause is just... We're gonna. We're doing a good job. We're gonna go out there. We're gonna bring enlightenment to the universe. These guys, the Seventeenth Legion, fought with. Uh, it says here the cold fury that only the condemned and redeemed could know. While other legions took some time to acquire formal formal names, the Seventeenth Legion was named the Imperial Heralds almost immediately after their founding. They delivered the Emperor's ultimatum: submit or be destroyed. So they had a very unique kind of way of waging war, the Imperial Heralds did. When they would defeat an enemy, they would empty their libraries and records of any contents that they thought were heretical or sorcerous. Condemned works, individuals, and buildings would be destroyed in the name of the Imperial Truth. For those of you who don't know, the Imperial Truth in the Warhammer 40k universe basically is the Emperor's way of saying there's no gods, there's no need for religion, there's no need for anything supernatural. Um, everything can be explained through science and enlightenment. And so they would go across the galaxy and try to preach this the imperial truth and uh, enlightenment. And that was kind of the golden age before it all kind of fell apart with the Horus heresy. So uh, the Great Crusade, they were uh, the, the word bearers. They were named after Lorgar, their Primarch was found on a world called Colchis. And uh, Lorgar joined the Great Crusade. He appointed trustworthy regents to rule over Colchis and devoutly complied with his father's direction. He was, okay, the thing about Lorgar was he was very pious. While other legions were rapidly conquering planet after planet, the word bearers proceeded much more slowly because they would build temples and shrines in veneration of the emperor who was also deemed the god of the Imperium by Lorgar on each of the newly conquered planets. And uh, well, an interesting thing for those of you who read the Horus Heresy books, I'm not going to say which one it was, but one of the uh, most iconic texts that talk about how the Emperor is a god and the Emperor should be worshipped and venerated as a god, you would have no idea, but it's mentioned later on in one of the later books that it was written by Lorgar before he fell to chaos. So he was very fanatical, very religious. He really believed that the emperor was a god. He thought, uh, who else but a god could do all of the things that the emperor has done? You know, unite Terra, make all these uh, spacefaring armies to go out across the universe and reunite all the planets that had been lost during the long night of darkness, or the uh, scientific, I guess, the, the warp blackout that all the human planets all across the universe were kind of cut off from each other and cut off from Earth or Terra. And so after the storms abated, the Emperor says, okay, we're going to go out, we're going to 
reunite humanity. We're going to reconnect humanity across the entire universe. And Lorgar just thought, you know, nobody but the emperor could do this. So he, he thought that he was a god, and so he worshipped him like that. And Lorgar, uh, you know, for those of you who have not read it, The First Heretic is a novel by Aaron Dembski Bowden about the word bearers and their fall to chaos uh, in the 30K millennium, the 30th millennium. And it, it really gets into... Uh, Lorgar's head and why he does what he does, why he acts the way he does, why he makes the choices he does. And uh, it's a really great book. So Lorgar, he also wanted to come across that he wasn't a warrior. Like he had some of his brother Primarchs, Lehman Russ, um, Sanguinius, Lionel Johnson, they were fighters. They were they were born to to take up the sword and be tacticians and wage war across the galaxy. And he didn't see himself like that. He thought of himself much more as, uh, you know, a man of, of peace and enlightenment and truth and stuff. Sure, there's this huge event where the emperor finds out what's going on. And he says, okay, word bearers, what's going on? Why aren't you you know, expanding across the stars and reconquering all these planets and bringing them into compliance. And he finds out that it's because the word bearers have been taking so much time to build these temples and build these cities and and everything to worship him. And this is not this is not what the emperor wants. The emperor is trying to get rid of religion. He's trying to get rid of of veneration and fanaticism. And uh, he doesn't either. He doesn't realize it, or he decides that it's going to be worth it to teach Lorgar and the Legion a lesson in humility and also destroy their greatest work. So the word bearers had this city, Monarchia. It was a perfect city that was a testament to all that Lorgar and the word bearers stood for. What happened was the emperor ordered the ultramar ultramarines to utterly destroy the city, even though they tried to get them out and uh, get, get all the people out in time and abandon it. Um, this city of Monarchia was just a testament to the emperor as a god and worshipping the emperor as a god. So uh, the emperor said, Ultramarines, go down there, destroy it, destroy everything. I don't want to see any temples or anything that even hints at religion and destroy it all. And then I'm going to come down after you're done and I'm going to make the entire Word Bearers Legion kneel before you and uh, before... Uh, before me. So there, here we go. The Legion in its entirety is forced to kneel in the ashes of their greatest achievement and re-pledge themselves to the Great Crusade and to the Emperor. That's like the Emperor's tough love, right? And he's, he's the father and he's punishing the son. And instead of getting the effect that he want and kind of refocusing Lorgar the way he wished, uh, it had the complete opposite effect. And it made Lorgar question his devotion to the Emperor, to the Great Crusade, and uh, to everything that he believed in, which was, which is great. So he, here we go, in time, he began to realize that his worship of the emperor as a god had been false. He still maintained his view that faith was central to the human psyche and that it was still plausible that his views could be validated. So his homeworld, Colchis, the one that he landed on, uh, had this thing called the old faith, which uh, he had Let's see. Da, 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 da. Which he kind of went on a pilgrimage to try and find out what you know what it was about, and so um, he went on this pilgrimage, and all this crazy stuff happened. I, I don't I don't reveal too much of it. I want to get more into the character of these guys, though, and and what uh, what kind of embodies them. So the word bearers are all of them. They have in their DNA, in their gene seed, which is implanted into their bodies, and kind of. Um, makes them who they are. They are all fanatical and they are all believers. And in the first heretic, it's revealed that they are so utterly devoted in their worship and in their faith that um, they will follow Lorgar no matter what. Lorgar is, is the guy that they will follow like no matter what. And most space marines will say that about their their Primarch. I'll follow my Primarch no matter what. But the word bearers have it like in their DNA that they can do nothing but follow their Primarch. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool and really interesting. The word bearers, besides being super fanatical and religious, are also the first ones to consort 
with demons and to have the demons actually uh, possess and invade their bodies. So again, in the first heretic, you see how this all happens. What are the events that, that, that go about um, making this happen? But um, yeah, needless to say, if you collect Chaos Space Marines and you collect Word Bearers, you're probably going to want to have some mutation bits around that you can use. Today, their armor, or currently, their armor is red with silver trim. This is what they look like now. Originally, if you have the Forge World book or if you've seen, seen it, uh, they had granite colored armor, which is a little bit lighter than the dark gray of the Space Wolves uh, gray armor that they had. But it's, it was, it's almost like concrete. The Ceramite looks almost like it was concrete. If you look at some of the pictures, uh, it's really interesting because they look like uh, concrete armor. Then uh, through the Crusade, during events, which we won't get into, they changed their armor from gray to red, gradually. At first it was only certain chosen few that could wear the red armor, and then pretty soon they all got rid of the, the gray armor and, and went into red. So here we see some awesome artwork. And uh, again, I'm on the warhammer40k.wikia.com page. And you'll see, okay, if, if you're collecting word bearers and you're thinking, how can I build them up? If you looked at my Chop Shop video, what? Choose any two or more $5.99 each. Oh, hmm. Then you'll notice that I put a lot of devotional scrolls, sc book work, par purity seals, parchment, because they are, like, very devotional. The Space Marines and the models in the 40k range use purity seals like this with written words on it to show their devotion to say that we pledge ourselves to the Emperor and uh, we promise to do this and that and this and that and um, it kind of breaks up the uniformity of them. It gives them each individuality. One of them might say uh, because I was scared or weak in my last battle I promise this time to be uh, to hold in the face of the enemy or somebody else might say um, somebody's might even be an honor and say that I personally defeated an enemy champion in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I'm awesome. You guys should follow me. I think this guy's wearing a face. Hmm. Grimdark. Alright, so, yeah, here's, here's a couple more awesome pictures of pre-heresy word bearers. Word bearers. This is an awesome artwork from Aurelian, the short story novel. But yeah, even though he says he's a uh, he's not a fighter and he's more of a, a of a statesman and a um, like a thinker, the um, yeah he he could still handle himself. And oh, another cool thing about Lorgar, which a lot of people might not know, is that he tattooed um, script all along his head of the the writings of his books. So. He has these two big bad guys in his corner, Corpheron and Erebus, and here's the two of them. And they were kind of like his adoptive parents back when he was found on Colchis. They kind of took care of him. When he became a space marine, he brought them with him. And they are huge architects in the back of the Horus Heresy, which is the big, the big event that split all of the, all of the space marine legions. And in the end, he becomes a demon prince, chosen of Chaos Undivided. All four of the Chaos Gods uh, love him. They think he's great. They give him all this power. And yeah, now what does he do now? He just kind of hangs out and pops out every now and then to be evil. Uh, and then he goes, and then he goes away. So, word bearers. I never used to like them. I thought they were kind of cheesy. I thought they were just so, so cheesy. Uh, here you see their their armor. Yeah, like I said, kind of like a light concrete. I always thought they were kind of cheesy, but you know what? Um, the more I got to read them, and Aaron Demsky Bowden so awesome at showing you, you know, why you should care and sympathize for them. You still might not, but um, but but it was so great because most times when you see a word bearer written in a 40k or even a 30k novel before the first heretic. They're all just like, oh, yeah, candles and sacrifice and, and blah, worship the dark gods and evil, blah. And, yeah, there's no real reason why you should care. I mean, it's okay if the guy is evil, but I want 
I want to care or understand or you know have a little uh, a little bit of a grasp on why he is the way he is otherwise he's just evil for evil's sake and then he just comes off as cheap to me you know so Aaron Dembski Bowden you're awesome you got some more pictures at the bottom you've got uh, pre-heresy word bearers in their concrete armor the the gray and then you've got the more uh, prevalent as they started coming out the red armor All right, so let's take a look at some models next. I Google searched word bearers, and here are some models that I came up with. A lot of opportunity to do conversion work. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Conversion, uh, the word bearers are a conversionist's best friends. Well, look at this. Awesome. Um, they also make a lot of use of cultists or the human population which they convert to their side but yeah a lot of a lot of great inspiration out there if you want to find it the word bearers um you can use possessed bits for them and uh yeah just a lot of great great looking um examples out there so thanks for watching everybody. This has been Fluff Hunters for the Word Bearers Space Marine Legion, Chaos Space Marines now. Hope you enjoyed it. For any of you who might have been curious, um, it might be interesting to know that I, I didn't like them. And after reading about them and getting a little bit more of a grasp on why they are the way they are, I still don't like them, but at least I don't uh, think they're the lamest Legion anymore. Who, who do I think is the lamest Legion now? I think the Black Legion, just because they're the uh, cookie cutter bad guys. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next one.